So today we're going to have a serious discussion about refrigeration. See how serious I am? No, I am serious. Uh, I have a refrigerator in the van that's called an absorption type refrigerator. And it works fine unless the temperature gets up past about 80 or 85 degrees. It can't keep up. And I experienced a loss of food and a lot of aggravation on my trip to Oregon when temperatures not only went above 85, but they kept going right up into the three digits. Um, I had to quickly find uh, an inexpensive ice chest, get some ice, chill down the things that uh, until I could eat them. And I still had some things that spoiled that I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't eat things fast enough or use them up fast enough. And so I lost some food. And that irritated me to no end. Because not only uh, did I lose the nourishment from the food, but it also, I also lost the money that I spent on the food. So that was like a double whammy. Uh, I didn't like that. Which motivated me to seek out other solutions for refrigeration. And I found several. Um, most of them involve some sort of a compressor refrigerator as opposed to the uh, less efficient absorption type refrigerator that, are, that I have in the van and that most people have in their RVs if they're any age at all. Maybe some new ones have this compressor technology, but um, older ones definitely, one of these refrigerators is probably in there. So, uh, compressor refrigerator, more efficient, operates on 12 volts, sips electricity to keep things cold, is capable of keeping things cold in higher temperatures. Um, good. Uh, where do, let's sign me up. Where do I get one? Well, not so fast. The, the thing that I was seeing with everybody online that has one of these that's reviewing it or demonstrating it for people, that kind of thing, uh, they were essentially uh, looked like, a, like an ice chest. And there's nothing wrong with an ice chest. It's just, okay, I go out, I buy one of these that's the ice chest style, and now I have to figure out a place to put it. It's going to displace more volume out of the van to do the work that the refrigerator I have should be doing. And that refrigerator is already displacing quite a bit of space in the van. So to have it just hollow doing nothing and have to make space for something else to do that work is, uh, you know, it's a head scratcher for me. It's like, huh, okay. So. In thinking about this, the ideal situation would be if I could take out the Dometic refrigerator, the three-way refrigerator that uses the propane, and install a compressor refrigerator in place of it without having to do anything. Just uh, one out, one in. Plug and play. <laughs> so, is that even possible? Uh, yeah, it is. I found a company uh, through another van dweller and I'm going to give him a shout out. It's Cheap RV Living. He has a YouTube channel. Go and visit him. He's a veteran. Uh, he just recently bought a 
refrigerator for his van. It's one of the ice chest styles, but it's not so much that as it is the company he bought it from. And this company makes truck refrigerators for long haul truckers. And one of the units, if all my observations are correct, is exactly the right size <laughs> to fit in the van. So let's take a look at the dimensions on the spec sheets and see what they look like. <clears throat> so here are the truck fridge dimensions. Uh, height, width, depth. So the, the height is 29 and a half. The width is 20 and one quarter, exactly the same as the Dometic. And the depth is 20 and three quarters. Now here are the dimensions for the Dometic. And they are um, substantially the same. Now, what I made was a list of reasons to buy it. It eliminates the propane. No more open flame. No more recurring propane costs. Reduce spoilage. Um, best value. Thermostatic control. Solar compatible. No modifications. Two amp per hour uh, usage of current. Uh, comparable capacity. It's the same size as the Dometic and it adds value um, to the van by virtue of the fact it's more modern technology. So let's see. Yeah, it's big. Um, it's got three shelves plus shelves in the door and they say it's got also got a crisper bin. Um, if it doesn't, I can create one. Uh, well, how about the price? Oh my gosh. It's $5.99. And the price for shipping is $100. So a total cost of $6.99 for this fridge. Uh, flange installation, I don't think I would need that. They also make one that's AC, but I have all of the transformer, I have all the 12 volt conversion built into the van already. I don't see myself needing um, the AC option. So we're going to stick with these figures here truck fridge, and there's a truck fridge in Arizona. So I'm going to contact them and send them my dimensions with, with the Dometic that I have and ask them if they believe that this model TF-130 would fit in its place. That's probably a good place to start, so I think I'll do that. That's where I'm leaving this video. I'm in the process of contacting truck fridge to get their opinion about whether or not this TF-130 they have will fit in the cabinet space that is occupied right now by the Dometic refrigerator. And if uh, I get a green light from them, then it's just a matter of putting together $700 essentially to order the fridge and get it delivered. I'm not financially in the position to do that right now so that may take a little time for me to get up and going but I thought I'd put this video out so that in case there's anybody else out there that's doing a build out or that wants to exchange a Dometic and is trying to figure out what to put in place of it that this might help them. So if you found this video helpful or 
know somebody maybe that it would help, share the video. Please uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and comment as you see fit. Thanks for watching. Till next time, see you later.